Hi, it's Editing Haley. I just wanted to come on here before the video starts and say that I don't do a whole lot of talking and commentary because it was just kind of a heavy video and I didn't feel like comedy and satire necessarily fit the vibe. So if you're not wanting to watch like a more serious video where we kind of just listen and absorb a little bit of comedic relief, then that's totally fine. There's probably other videos out there that people are more chatty, but if you're just kind of wanting someone to watch the video with and be there with you to help you process the video, if you're not really wanting to watch it alone, then this is a good video for you because I'll just be there with you and watch it together. That was my preface. Enjoy the video. Today we are watching the Daryl Brooks sentencing and we are basically listening to victim impact statements. This woman right now is talking about the loss of her mom. I don't really want to talk too much because I want to get right into it. So let's just go ahead and unmute this real quick. At this time, I would like to address my mother's murderer. Whatever your name is, I don't care. You ran over my mom like she was mere roadkill. What are you doing? The only reason you hit the brakes that day was to get her off the hood of your car. You targeted her, you targeted her with your vehicle and you hit her on purpose. You don't deserve to be here. You do not deserve forgiveness. You somehow still get to talk to your mom, but mine is gone forever because you killed her. Just gonna test it's astonishing to me that any person could have absolutely zero regard for their fellow human being. Since you call yourself a man of God, then you know that the only punishment you are deserving of is death six times over. And I can't wait for the day that I hear you're dead in prison. Damn! Thank you. I appreciate your time. My name is Alicia Kulig, and I am the youngest daughter of Jane Kulig. I've tried to figure out where to start, and there really isn't anywhere specific to start off with. I can't put all of my emotions onto however many pieces of paper, because there's just not enough. At least in my mind. I've waited for this day, both anxiously, yet ready to share my piece on the matter. I'm here, uh, I'm here speaking upon behalf of my mother and the rest of my family and my twin brother standing right next to me. I've been to most of the trial that I can make it to as it is my first year in college and I, my mom would want me to put my schooling first. <sighs> I have many emotions on this subject. But without a doubt, the most, ex um, the most expense extensive emotion I feel is grief. At the time of this tragedy, I was 17 years old, and I was starting my senior year of high school, which most people would think should be your best time of school. But for me, it was anything but that. I was starting my college journey, at least trying to. My mom managed to take my brother and I on at least two college tours before she had passed. It was my last prom, my 18th birthday, and of course graduating, all of which I did not enjoy. Not one of them. The joy of these things were stripped away from me. Quickly on November, 12th, November 21st of 2021, I could tell you every last detail about that day, up to the clothes I was wearing. I could tell you what show I was watching, as I am thankful that I was sick that day and couldn't be at the parade to see what many got to see, unfortunately. I was bummed at first because I was sick that day and I couldn't see my mom march in her first ever parade. She was really excited. Granted, she's marched in parades before alongside my brother and I through WPRF, but this time the light was supposed to shine on just her. I don't think that it had been two hours since she left that my dad got a phone call from someone my mom had been marching with stating that she had been hit by a car. At first I thought my dad was just upset about something over work because that's kind of common. <laughs> um, or what my mind went to was that maybe the after parade traffic was pretty bad and somebody just she collided with another car not a car to person I remember the first thing I did is my dad told us all to run and get our shoes and before anybody got into the car 
I called my best friend. <laughs> and I told her that my mom had been hit and I didn't know the extent to which how bad the situation was and I would fill her in whenever I could. On the way to the hospital was when reality quickly set in and oh how I wish I was right. I wish that it was just this, I just wish that it was a car on car crash. Not a car, not an SUV to person. As we got closer to the hospital, the drasticity of this incident was quickly revealed. Ambulances were surrounding the hospital, and the waiting room was a triage. I will never forget the things I saw that day. I will never forget the chaos of parents searching for their children, demanding answers as we were for my mom. My dad rushed into the back. He had this sweatshirt on that had an ambulance symbol on it that he just thrifted and used it to his advantage. I specifically remember seeing the extreme dancers with gashes in their head and cuts all over their body and blood all over their clothes. In one direction I saw one girl, probably no older than 10, seizing in her wheelchair and the mother just screaming, not knowing what to do for her precious child. On the other end, I saw a girl that was on a blanket on the floor. She was screaming every time she was touched. And when we couldn't find out any information about where my mom was, I quickly knew, my quick, quickly my brain knew before my heart did the outcome. I never thanked my dad for this, but I appreciated the, optis the optimism and the composure he kept during the longest waiting period of my life. He was optimistic, saying that God would make everything okay. And we'd even joke around a little bit about my, about my mom while she was, well, while she was dead. When a doctor finally approached us, I was in the bathroom. I had to take some time away from my family as I didn't want them to see I was upset. My older sister, she pulled me out and she told me that they finally had some information. And when they told us, when they brought us back to the room and told us to sit down, you just know. Sorry, sorry about you that. Just know. Hearing that my mom had deathly in her injuries in her head and her lungs and all the rest of her organs, and she was deceased. That is the words that he used. He was de she was deceased. That is something that I will never be able to unhear along with what I saw in the triage of that hospital waiting room that day. Oftentimes when I hear sirens, I'm scared. I'm scared that another family has to go through what I went through, what I'm my so family went brother through. Being there with her. And it's terrifying that in the world we live in, something like that can happen in the blink of an eye. We were driven home by a squad that car that day, considering none of us were in good condition to drive. And I'll never forget all the phone calls I had to make to tell our loved ones that my mom was dead. That she didn't get the chance. She did not get a say in the matter. <laughs> I remember calling my best friend. All of my best friends. <laughs> and they stayed with me till 3 in the morning. And my boyfriend. They all did. And the next day I didn't even want to get out of bed. I couldn't. I don't... I, I still spend every day just waiting for this nightmare to end. As I think that second day, it still hasn't fully processed yet that my mom was no longer with us. I never would wish on my worst enemy to have the burden to share such horrible news that nobody ever prepares you for. After all is said and done, I couldn't get out of bed for a few days, nor did I have much of an appetite. The next few days consisted of me trying to put together this new life, all of which still doesn't still doesn't sink in sometimes but other days believe me it does even though i've received so much love and support from the community my friends and my family i've never felt so alone i don't think i'd ever be capable of feeling this much pain in my life but here i am i'm watching my siblings and my nephews and niece and my cousins and my aunt and all the rest of my family going through this it's just terrible up to today, I've experienced every holiday officially, besides my oldest nephew's birthday, without my mom. And they've all sucked, every last one of them. I slept through most of Thanksgiving. Christmas was probably the most depressing of all. 
It's supposed to be a time of cheer and joy. But how was I supposed to feel any of these things with my mom being dead? It was her favorite time of year, which made it even harder to enjoy. Every time we went to church, the song Silent Night came on, and she'd always cry. And now I do the same. <coughs> I also had my 18th birthday, two months after she was murdered. If it wasn't for my sister planning an amazing party for both my brother and I, I don't think I would have gotten out of bed that day. She was the woman that brought me into this world, and it didn't feel right celebrating without her. I had my senior prom without her, and she didn't get the chance to tell me how beautiful I looked, and then embarrass me with a bunch of pictures. I had to walk the stage at my high school graduation without my number one supporter cheering me on in the crowd. I received scholarships, and my mom didn't get to tell me how proud of me she was. I spent most of my senior year in the guidance counselor's office, catching up on all the missing work that I had, simply because I couldn't focus in class or at home, because I was too sad. There was at? a classmate in my school that truly understood what I was going through besides my friend and family. The day after the parade incident happened, she called me, and she asked if I was okay, because she, her family had experienced what I had. Her little sister was part of the dance team, and she was there and saw her sister get hit by this SUV. And as bad as it seems to say, I was glad in that moment that I had somebody that could relate to my situation that wasn't family. I felt for once that I had somebody that I could bond with that truly understood the emotions that I was feeling. I'm so glad that she didn't get to experience the extent of what I did and having to lose a loved one from the moment, but she came close. I love you guys. Quite often, I also think about my future as I think about my past memories with my mom. And although I wish I could say present memories, I don't have any. I think about how my mom won't be at my wedding and I'm gonna say a seat for her, but she won't be there and she won't get to see me say my vows or get married to the love of my life and she won't ever get to see my future kids and they won't know what it's like to have a grandma that spoils them and how I have to be uh, how I have to be the one with the burden to tell them of what happened to their grandmother and why they don't have one I won't ever get to ask my mom for parenting advice as a first time mom you Daryl Brooks took these experiences away from me and my brother as he will be in the same position as I am. And I wish I could say that I don't carry anger in my heart. But that's just simply not true. Oh, I'm angry that all this could have been prevented if you had just stopped. I think about how my mom saw what was coming. And she knew that there was absolutely nothing she could have done about it. I'm angry. Because as if my mom flying over the roof of your car wasn't good enough for you. You slammed on your brakes to get her off and continued to run her over. She wouldn't even have had a fighting chance because of you. I'm angry that all of us had to relive this trauma. As you sat in that chair for weeks, not giving a single crap about any of these people. I've watched as you mocked the Bible and people's religion and the fake tears that you put on. I've watched as you gave your closing statement about asking the jury to do what they think is right when you couldn't have just done that yourself in the first place. It's so true. I've waited for you to have a reason as to why you did all of this so that maybe somehow, somehow, I could get the slightest bit of closure. But I never will. A lot of people have asked me how I feel about the verdict. I feel happy that he was found guilty on all counts. Well. The jury found him guilty on all counts. But you know, it doesn't do crap for me because that won't change. What happened to my mom? She will not be coming home ever again. She will not ever make me another dinner. She will not ever attend my wedding. And I'll never get to hear her voice or hug her again. So really, it changes nothing for me. The only thing that it gives me at this time that I can say is that I know our justice system has persevered and that they have done my mom right. And I thank you all for that. As long with all the other victims, my life will never be the same because of you, Daryl Brooks. I have not enjoyed a single day fully since my mom has died. 
That's the least you could do. I'm you depressed. Know? A lot of the time, I don't watch certain shows anymore because it reminds me of my mom. I don't do certain things because it just hurts too much. I spent most of my summer inside instead of enjoying the sun and the warmth that we only get for a short period of time here in Wisconsin. I spent it inside being sad. You don't know what it's like. I had to be in that waiting room and my oldest nephew was texting me and asking me what is wrong and where his grandma was. And I couldn't lie to him. I had to say something. I was there when we had to break the news to my nephews and my niece that their grandma was not coming home. And I saw the tears run down their young, innocent faces and broke them. My nephew Darius, he's always been into video games. <laughs> but recently, all he does is stay in his room on the video games. And he doesn't really come out much anymore. And I can't help but think that's because of this incident. My mom was the glue that kept this family together. And without her, we've been falling apart. We've been struggling to stick together because nothing's the same. And I blame you for that every piece of it thank you it's just so infuriating to me before this one i was watching it upstairs while um stacy and i were hanging out and he was rolling his eyes at the guy that was talking because he was an adult man and now he's like just staring down at his whatever's going on here for no reason won't look her in the eyes it's just so interesting how he responds differently to each witness or you know person that's giving their impact statement so let's see what he's like for the next one i guess is what i'm saying oh look here we go he's starting to like go into a different type of like demeanor as soon as she's done now he's back up to like rolling his eyes yeah what is this what is this why doesn't wisconsin have the death sentence electric chair he is literally the most infuriating man. I have my stress ball, which is also a clown nose because Daryl Brooks is a clown. The definition of an angel is a person of exemplary conduct or virtue. They are tasked to keep the in all ways. Jane Kulik had many roles and relationships in her life, all of them purposeful and endearing. The impact in her many lifelong friendships were far reaching and will forever be felt. Jane had spent 52 years on this earth before she was ripped away from us by you on my daughter's birthday, which would have been a happy day. She was simply enjoying and celebrating the start of the season she loved best by handing out candy with her co-workers during the Christmas parade. That morning she went to church. She called her niece to wish her a happy birthday planning to call her later in the day and spend time talking and relaxing with her family before getting ready to go for a pre-parade lunch and pack a game with the last people who would see her alive. Jane considered those close to her as family. She had several families and roles within them. Some of them were daughter, sister, mother, wife, grandmother, aunt, and best friend. If you had gotten to know Jane, you would have known how- I just want to say, if this is Jane's dad, who was- Jane was 52 years old, he is looking really good for his age. Like, if this is Jane's parents, I'm not sure, maybe they're family friends, but he said his daughter's birthday. Look at how good they're looking for their age! How seriously she took those roles in relationships. Her people were everything, and her biggest blessings and motivators were her children, Taylor, Jacob, and Alicia, husband John, her grandchildren, Robert, Darius, and Kylie. She was happiest when surrounded by all of them, planning trips, hearing about daily growing glows, having game night, and even just falling asleep while enjoying a movie together. The Benz Houston family was honored and blessed to spend 42 of those 52 years with Jane as our family. <coughs> there are too many memories to list that include her. Memories that were both big and little life events. We would often hear stories of how her and her co-workers joked about her clumsiness, would be dressing up for the holidays, looked forward to and celebrate each other's milestones, or just plan to hang out. 
She was there for everything and for everyone. If she could not be there in person, she made up for it through weekly phone calls that would have you laughing yourself silly and creating a plan much like the one we had made the night before. To go shopping, make cookies, just a fun holiday celebration. <laughs> she was always willing and happy to help out, positive, never judgmental, spreading grace and patience to all she encountered. She loved, honored, and held dear her people and their places in her life. Our places in her life were forced to change instantly on November 21st, 2021. Our places in her life became now the people that were responsible for helping to keep her family together and keep them strong, help her children and her grandchildren make it through everything. You changed our place in her life. You made it forefront and you made us helpless because we don't feel that we could do those things the way she could have. We feel inadequate and broken because of you. The evening of November 21st, 2021, everything changed. That evening, Alicia sent me a message saying, Auntie, Mom's been hit and we don't know where she is or where they took her. We immediately drove out there to find her and helped make several phone calls to area hospitals to find her. After several hours of not having any answers, we finally decided to go sit in the lot of Waukesha Memorial where her children and husband were trying to find out information and were under a lockdown. We couldn't even go hug them. After hours of not receiving confirmation, Taylor finally sent the hardest message I have ever had to read. She's dead. She's dead. My daughter collapsed to the ground and I turned to my husband and begged and cried for him to bring her back. I wanted her back. For validation of our feelings and questioning of those same feelings, things we shouldn't have had to question. The question asked most by us is if Jane would have granted you grace. I know my answer. I know that she was the type of person that would have never saying anything bad about anyone. But for us, it's just not that simple, sir. This is what we do know, though, as Jane's collective whole. We will and never could ever forget her. We mourn the fact that she missed her twin senior year and graduation. We mourn the loss of her presence every day and especially at family functions. We miss the long weekly phone calls on Wednesdays and Fridays reminiscing about old times people we miss in just our daily lives we miss her hugs the smell of her hair her trying to hold in a laugh when we would make faces at an inappropriate time and as we say we miss the 47 faces of jane much of which can be seen in the pictures taken just hours before her death we are angry she will never be the mother of the bride or have the mother-son dance at her children's weddings. We are angry she will never get to make stronger bonds with the newest members of our family or hold the grandchildren and family yet to be born to her children or even ours. We are saddened that you feel you are suffering because your life has changed. Emotional support, cat. For us, it changed the night you ripped her away from us and drove by with her body on top and slowed down and ran her over. You say you have a clear conscience. How can you suffer if you have a clear conscience? At least you will always still be able to make the phone calls, write the letters, and visit with your people. We simply cannot, sir. Above all else, we are angry that Jane became known by people more because of the day she died and the way she died than because of who she was. That's so true. Taking all of that into consideration, we ask that you please hand down the maximum sentence for each conviction that you possibly could. The definition of an angel is a person of exemplary conduct and virtue. They are tasked with keeping their people safe, keeping them cherished, and keeping them loved. Those are all the things she did, so by that definition alone, 
Jane was an angel on earth. Thank you. I think that was the prior impact statement testimonies friend. So it was her mom and then they were friends with the family. It was, they were talking about the same person though. I don't know how long this break is going to be. Maybe we'll go back to some of the prior ones while we're on a break. But it's just so interesting to see how he reacts to people like pouring their heart out about how badly he hurt them. He just seems, I mean he seems like a typical narcissist, you know, like he doesn't give a shit. So let's go back to one of these. We'll start with this one. I hate him so much. Daryl Brooks. This is you. This is my impression of Daryl Brooks. That man has a sick mullet going on. You know he took a lot of time to put the moose in that this morning and make sure that it grew out nice and long. Sick mullet. Look at his long ass fingernails. 30, 358 days. Some days are a complete blur. Or, or turn the microphone closer to you. He's laughing at her. Oh, sorry. You messed up. <laughs> Katie Publiner, mother of Tyler Publiner. Looking back over the last 358 days, some days are a complete blur, others are as vivid as yesterday. At 4.39 p.m. on 11-21-21, changed my life, my sons, my family, my friends, and the Waukesha community. During the closing arguments, the defendant spoke of family. His grandmother released her statement to the media speaking of family. Through the past 360, 300, 358 days, we He's have heard the Brooks family that the Don't defendant laugh at your mother. as a reason for his decisions that evening. Except the decision making goes back further than that. It seems the decision was made not to get help, not to stay medicated, etc. and said to use it as an excuse for poor, selfish decisions. My family almost lost the only son, the only grandson, the only nephew, and that was not our decision. As a parent, I have carried the guilt that I debated with my son that he had to go to the parade that day. It was mandatory for his grade. The Packers were playing. It was cold and windy. I had to use a life teaching moment. He made a commitment to the band. This was all part of it. He, reluctant, he left reluctantly. I talked to him shortly after I found a parking spot downtown to make sure he was warm enough and told him the general area where I was going to look for a spot to watch the band perform. From 4.33 to 4.34 p.m., I watched the South Band march and perform in front of me. As I was packing up my blankets and chair into the wagon, I noticed what I thought was between a 2008 to 2012 maroon red Ford Escape driving extremely fast past me. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I remember making the mental notes about the vehicle, the driver, turned to a friend sitting with me, and we were both in awe. Then we heard the screams and the sounds of things being hit, like when you bump into a construction barrel on the freeway. Ugh. From 446 to 458 was complete chaos, fighting the crowd of people running out of the area screaming shots fired, trying to find my son. As I approached the intersection of Main Street and Barstow, the area went completely dark, maybe only in my mind. As I searched for my son, asking people if they knew where he was. A familiar voice behind me said, he's over here. I turned to see him laying in the street with his feet pointing north. Enter your pin to unlock the device. Apologies. We had no idea what had happened, only that he was tasting blood oh. and that his stomach hurt. Soon EMTs were there and we went for a run up and down Main Street as, as he was being helped before they had a true plan where they were going to stage the injured. He was taken off the gurney and placed in the street to wait an ambulance. This is where we met our first hero of the journey. A complete stranger came to sit with us and help roll my son while he was vomiting blood from his injuries, helped to keep him calm and, confront and comfort his fears. That was the 18 minutes that felt like an hour. I remember looking around as I waited, not too far in front of me was a very young officer with his rifle standing guard. To my left were two brothers that we had known in the band and baseball. One lying on the street clearly injured, the other standing by. I felt completely helpless as I wanted to, to go and help them. But I couldn't leave my son injured. They say everything happens for a reason, something I have firmly believed. At 5.16 p.m., we were loaded into the ambulance, as I referred to it as a little ambulance I could. 
flip well, in the middle of everything. Could. It had a coolant leak. Oh, God. The smell of antifreeze <laughs> will trigger me forever. Ugh. We made it out to Oconomowoc, and I learned after that it made another run after that before it died. Damn. While my son was whisked away to emergency surgery, I had to start making phone calls, returning text messages, figuring out what was next. Will he make it through surgery? How bad were his injuries? After six days at the hospital, we were sent home. My athletic son couldn't lift over, lift our cats, pour a glass of milk, put his socks and shoes on. I think that's he the has a guy standing next long. to her. And as a catcher, he questioned his ability to be able to play the sport he loves, the sport that he eats, breathes, and sleeps. After missing school and work for almost two months, we were able to start to get back and work up to a full-time basis over the course of a month. Okay, so that's the, that's the guy One that got hit. One lingering that's injury crazy. brought questions if he could play ball for what would be the first full season of his high school career. COVID had canceled and shortened the prior two. April 6th, he took to the field with that bandmate that was lying in the street just a few feet from us just three months earlier. As we tried to find a sense of normal in between doctor's appointments and procedures, through the process and the journey of the judicial system, we have found a new family, one that can relate to the horror, the fear, the trauma of that night, changing our lives forever. The criminal complaint had listed 62 named victims, now survivors, six had gained their wings. What it did not include were the 16 jurors that had also become victims of the defendant's actions that night while the named victims, their families, and friends had to relive that night they were experiencing He's firsthand. all confused by that. Mrs. Edwards' statement asks that we forgive her grandson blaming the mental illness, not encouraging him to take ownership for his action. She said that she lost a grandson, his mother lost a son, his children lost a father. Well, that isn't completely a true still statement. Alive. As they He's will be able be to talk jail. to him, send him letters, visit him, hopefully in a maximum security prison. They seem to forget there is a mother that can't kiss her son goodnight, a father that can't play ball with his son, a brother that can't fight with his brother and still be his best friend. There are three children that can't call their mother for advice, go shopping, plan their weddings, watch over them as they reach for their dreams. There are numerous grandchildren that won't get to go to grandma's anymore, get spoiled and sent home, hyped on sugar and love. There are teenagers that had to grow up way too quickly having to make adult decisions about their future. There are girls that may never dance again without fear, their innocence taken away by a selfish decision. There is a grandfather that cannot tell the family stories anymore. He can't watch his wife dance. These families will forever be missing their loved ones. They can't call them, write a letter, or visit them. Nothing will bring back the son, the mom, the daughter, the grandma, and the grandfather to these families. Nothing can restore the innocence lost to these to ease their fear but this community came together to lift each other up support each other looked after those that were in their worst moments celebrated the wins along the way returning to the dance floor dancing in the streets and playing baseball the prosecution team did an amazing job representing everyone of the pl of the plaintiffs in this case thank you the victim witness team was so caring and diligent and keeping us informed. Being whenever there was a question that came up. Pepper, who greeted us every time we came to the courthouse, she put a smile on everyone's face, brought a little humor, or a caring snuggle. That's cute. Your Honor, you are the standard that should be set across the country. Your patience, your diligence will never be forgotten. Love that. From one selfish actions of one person came a community rising like a phoenix, stronger than ever, stronger together. I ask that you hand down the maximum possible sentence without parole in prison so that everyone in our Waukesha Strong community can heal, remember, grow, and never have to look back. We are back live, so I'm gonna catch us up to where we're at now. All about getting folks up. There we go. So I did it. Thank you. Are you proud of me? We'll I did be, it. Um, for victims. By the way, has anybody in the chat ever gotten hit by a car before? That's the question of the day. Personally, I have not. Good afternoon. My name is Leanne Hollingsworth, the mother of two victims. I want to start by thanking everyone involved in this case by bringing justice for us as victims. I want to thank all of the officers, first responders that helped us that day, especially the amazing Waukesha County Sheriff who was willing to transport me and my daughter to the hospital so quickly. If it wasn't for you, I'm not sure she'd be Stop here Stop writing. 
Thank you to all the staff what at Children's Hospital for the amazing care of your daughter. you taking notes long-ass fingernails? And thank you to the Waukesha community. Thank you to the good Samaritans who stayed with my daughter until I arrived, covered her with blankets to keep her warm, tried to comfort her. To all of you, I'm forever grateful. But to you, Dara Brooks, November 21st, 2021 is a day that will forever be etched in our minds and hearts as one of the worst days of our lives. On this day, you, Daryl Brooks, made the conscious decision to drive through the Waukesha Christmas Parade and destroy the sense of security and safety of my family and thousands of others. My two daughters were doing what Stop they love most, writing. dancing in the parade with their what teammates you when you destroyed that fun. My oldest daughter watched as her teammates went flying through the air, one of which was her sister. Oh my god. First of all, comment what you think he's writing, but can you imagine watching your teammates go flying through the air as well as your sister? Like, just seeing anyone go flying through the air, but it's like people that you've grown up with and are very close to, that's traumatizing! She had to make the frantic call to me to tell me that her sister was injured. Not only that, but because you, Daryl Brooks, continued driving and didn't stop, no so one knew if the danger was gone or if they were still at risk. I remember the terrified phone call from a couple of blocks away telling me to get inside the nearest building to stay safe. As a mother, I knew in that moment I couldn't leave my kids alone, so I had to make the choice to risk my own. This is just so infuriating, because what is he doing? Taking notes on the witness impact statement? ...safety, run all the way down Main Street to get to them. I myself okay. had to see the carnage of what you, Daryl Brooks, did to so many people. Those images will never leave me and will haunt me for the rest of my life. That view can only be described as that of a war scene, one which you knowingly caused. As we made our way down Main Street, I had no idea what to expect when I found my younger daughter. Mr. Brooks, you mentioned your young daughter during the trial. I want you to picture your daughter right now, your eight-year-old daughter. And I want you to imagine the fear and anger that you'd feel if a monster drove over your daughter and many others. I want you to picture finding your own daughter when I describe what I found. When I finally found our group, I had to run from person to person lying on the ground to find my daughter. And when I finally did, she was unresponsive, couldn't open her eyes, oh was missing God. her white Christmas hat and headband and her shoe. Her sock was shredded with road rash on her foot. He's writing, missing Christmas hat and shoe. That's what he's writing, right? Because, like, what else would he be writing? Her left leg was bent horribly in a way a leg shouldn't bend. Ugh. Her head was immediately swelling in addition to the road rash oh across her face God. and the rest of her body <laughs> and the blood coming from her mouth. It was over the next few days we learned of the extent of all of her injuries. Severe bleeding of the brain, which required emergency surgery. Severe traumatic brain injury. Multiple skull fractures, which required emergency surgery to repair. A this severely broken femur, which required two rough, surgeries to repair. This one right here. A pelvic a bone fracture. Couple months. And I'm sure many Probably others really missed day. in the hundreds of pages Hearing of reports from too. her injuries and weeks-long hospital stay. While my husband and I stayed in the hospital with our youngest daughter, unsure of whether she would live to see the next day, my family stepped up to take care of our older daughter and help her try to feel safe after the trauma that you had just inflicted. I cannot begin to expect a narcissist like you to understand what it's like to sit in the ice and out, stare girl. at your daughter with tubes and wires from every part of her body trying to keep her alive. Watching every monitor and test result, hoping that things are going the right direction. Not knowing if your daughter is going to wake up the same bright bubbly girl she was before a monster plowed through at her Christmas parade. <sighs> when she did wake up, the real struggle began. Our then nine-year-old daughter had to learn to eat, talk, move and walk again she had to use a wheelchair yeah, and walk for down, months Darryl. even as she returned to school instead of playing Asshole. in the snow with her friends at recess she sat in a wheelchair she couldn't dance she couldn't run around playing with her friends even today she deals with the effects of this day her legs still hurts she struggles with the neurological effects of her injuries is on seizure medication and worries about every little symptom for fear it is something bigger related to her injuries oh my god your own mother and grandmother, Daryl Brooks, have claimed your supposed mental health issues are to blame, but you, Daryl Brooks, were found to be completely competent and fully aware of exactly what you were doing. All you had to do was hit the brakes instead of the gas pedal. Yet, like the narcissist you are, you claimed you honked to the horn, but in your eyes, somehow it was their fault. They didn't get out of the way. You yeah. were so fully aware of your wrongfulness of your actions that you ran from the vehicle, tried to change your appearance, and lied in an attempt to get away from the scene. You knew exactly what you were doing. Daryl Brooks, you have destroyed our sense of safety and security in our own community. You are the reason my kids are afraid to cross the street. Facts. You are the reason my kids don't sleep at night. You are the reason we may never enjoy a parade again. You are the reason my daughters are afraid of the dark. You are the reason my daughters don't feel safe without their parents around. You are the reason we visit doctors constantly. 
and you are the reason their lives will never be the same again. You have taken something from them that cannot be regained, and for that, I hope you rot in hell. Oh, he's all upset about that. I'm gonna write that down. Rot in hell. The Walk Through Christmas Parade, November 21st, 2021, impacted me both physically and mentally because of you, Daryl Brooks. After the Christmas Parade incident that night, I had to try and find my sister. I was taken away from her to get to safety. I had to explain to my mom what happened while crying and trying to get to a safe spot. Look at this child! I got to finally find my Darryl. family, but then getting taken away again from my mother and sister to get to safety. Oh my I had to try Lord. to stay calm in front of all of my cousins and family. I was not able to see my sister for over a week and a half, and I did not get to see my mom for several days. All of these things and many more were very hard for me. I was so worried not just about my parents and my sister, but about all of my friends and family that were either at the parade or in it. After the parade, I was scared to go in my own house. I was even scared to be in a room or house alone. It was very scary to do anything alone. I was scared of everything. I didn't sleep for the first night, even though you, Doe Brooks, were arrested. I was so worried about that something might happen. I no longer felt safe. Not only did you impact me, but you also impacted my sister, Mackenzie. She was severely injured with a brain injury and a broken femur. She was in the hospital for two weeks because of you. I didn't get to spend as much time as I normally would with my parents because they were at the hospital with my sister. During the holidays and Thanksgiving, I should have been able to spend with my parents and sister, but I couldn't because of you. The in incident impacted me physically as well. I had a huge bruise on my back, as well as the bruised bones in both of my ankles. That night, as soon as you drove through the parade, all I could think about was my sister. I was so worried about her. I kept trying to find her. After running from person to person, she was the last person that I found. Mm -hmm. All I remember was seeing my teammates' terrified faces as they were on the sidewalk. As I was looking for my sister, I saw four of the girls that were injured on the ground before I even found my sister. When I found her, I was suddenly rushed into a store, as I was still on the phone with my mom. As soon as I rushed into the store, my nana and uncle both came to get me when my mom went to the hospital with my sister. All I can remember is that I wasn't even scared for myself. I was mostly worried about my family and my teammates. It was almost three hours before we were allowed to leave the church we were on lockdown. I hadn't had any connection with my family for the whole time that I was in the church. There were a lot of people coming into the church. Also, see how everybody is turned to look at the people giving their testimonies? I'm not sure if he's already facing them or if he's just like being also like additionally disrespectful. I'm not sure. Church after I came in trying to all stay safe. It's hard to even think that you do not even care about anything that you did or anyone that you hurt. It's hard to know that all you care about is trying to make everyone feel unsafe and scared to do anything. The fact that most scared me and made me feel disgust when I heard your name or saw you was the fact that you didn't stop when you hit multiple people. You didn't stop when you saw or heard yourself hitting people and the most horrific thing is that all you try to do is run away from your problems. Let this be a lesson to you, Daryl Brooks. Your crimes and stupidity is always going to come back to you, no matter how hard you try for it not to. I hope you know that you were such a horrible person that night, and I hope you get what you deserve, and I know that you will. Also, he should have dressed appropriately for this. Usually they don't allow people to wear their prison uniforms or anything like that. Usually they prefer for them to dress up. I think out of respect, and also it used to be, while he was still in the during the trial, to protect the jury from knowing that he was in custody. Don't know why. I, I said that in my last video, but... I am yeah. one of four siblings that were victims of Mr. Brooks. In fact, I am the oldest child, and with being the oldest, that comes with the unhealthy ambition to protect my family. Hey. On November 21st, I felt like I was unable to achieve that goal. My siblings, fortunately, don't remember that night, but unfortunately, I do. I remember everything from celebrating my sister's birthday beforehand to meeting her unconscious at the hospital. I can't help but feel guilty for what happened to my brother that night. Everything up to his open compound fracture and his shadowed humor. Something deep inside me is still believes that it's my fault. He wasn't supposed to be there that night. He wasn't supposed to be walking in the parade, but he wanted to because his older sister was there. Mm. He was right next to me through the whole parade up to when we got struck. <coughs> I can't help but feel like some of my mental and physical injuries or some of his mental physical injuries are my fault. I still remember screaming his name while being carried into burlap and lace on Main Street. I would like to say I had hope, but with all the frustrated, confused, and what-if <coughs> statements and scenarios in my head, that hope eventually turned into doubt. That night, I realized the love I had for my family. I still have regrets and struggles, but so does my mom, dad, friends, and community. 
We all have regrets, but the struggles we faced are laying on your hands, Mr. Brooks. My uncle always told me to show kindness through times of trial, but I am not able to give that to you. Even through school, I've been taught that forgiveness is the moral way to forget, but I will never be able to forgive and forget. I mean, how can a man not know the difference between good and evil, right and wrong, good and bad? Basic things you were taught in kindergarten. Brooks, your behavior before and during this trial, your ignorance and arrogance to the victims of your crime is so disrespectful and just unbelievable. Fun fact, you, Mr. Brooks, brought my mom to testify on your behalf. How could you believe that was the civil thing to do, knowing that she had four kids injured and hit <coughs> by your SUV? You knew that this would affect her and my family emotionally and physically. How could you be so stupid, egotistical, and delusional? You bring up mental illness, but what I find unacceptable is the fact that you had the choice, but you kept going. I will always have the simple question of why, but that might never be answered. My sisters had a passion for dance. My brother played baseball and soccer. I am a dancer, and I will always be a dancer, but because of your actions, it will never feel the same. I know my siblings, and I have accepted the fact that we might never be able to regain our passions and dreams. We know that we now have lifelong challenges, but we also have people that support us and help us regain our hope and goals that we lost that night. Overall, I want people to remember that this is not about the parade, this is about the man. That depression, anger, sorrow, all these negative feelings shouldn't be directed towards the parade, instead directed towards the man. This is not the parade's fault, and I think we need to come together as a community and realize that. With all the media and all the press, reaching out to my family in the past year has brought anxiety and stress. I want to thank my family, friends, and community one more time for supporting my family through these trying times and also giving me the confidence to stand here and say I want to punch this man in the face. <laughs> Your Honor, I need Daryl Brooks to serve the time he deserves without parole. I need him to be locked up for life, and that is my statement. That was great. I love that. Mr. Daryl Brooks, I am back. Do I have to say more? My daughter pretty much clarified why the hell did you bring me up to the stand? Pardon my language, Judge. <laughs> Absolutely boggles my mind. Absolutely boggles my mind. Once, twice, three, four, five times. They brought my children's names up. They addressed concerns. I just, your arrogance and your behavior is just pathetic. On that behalf, though, I am here on behalf of not one, not two, not three, but four children. I'm not going to testify and tell you all the particulars and injuries of what happened to my children. We saw that on the stand. I'm not going to tell you about the stress of how, as parents, we had to suffer and continue to suffer day after day, taking our kids to appointments, having a healthy mind and soul. But you know what? We're doing a darn good job. I say this with a heavy heart. I have my kids here. I have my kids here. Grayson, as Charlotte says, had open compound fracture. We know how open compound fracture happens, Mr. Brooks. You could have stopped. You saw the darn exhibit. Oh, sorry. We, you saw that exhibit of my daughter. You saw her, and your expression is unacceptable. Sure. Your behavior has been unacceptable. That's Emotionally, as a mother, you have to go one way or another. You have to, let me just start off by saying, as Charlotte knows, there were two calls that came to me that night, and I couldn't, I couldn't put everything together. I was just like, what is going on? That third call, my mindset changed. I couldn't cry. I couldn't get mad. I couldn't. What she's saying is she got one call that one child was injured, then another call that another child was injured. Then by the third call, she just couldn't even feel angry, upset. She just, like, went numb. I had to fight for my children. Their father and I had to push forward. Do You're we so have stupid. time to worry about our own feelings? Oh, boy. <laughs> we still are working through that. I am working through that. But you know what? I won't show them weakness. They are on a positive road, mentally and physically. My son Grayson, 
loves soccer, can kick that ball in any direction. And now he's still learning to walk and run in a consistent manner. Alice, as Charlotte mentioned, whose passion was dancing, has sorrow now. She hasn't, been, she hasn't made it back to dancing yet. Vivian, the youngest, as you saw in that exhibit, as I spoke, is the life of the family, joking, living it up when you broke her tailbone and she was unconscious at Children's Hospital for extended time. You did that, Mr. Brooks. This is on you. Their family will not allow them to be weak. They are going to strive for success with what you put them through. Again, I, I want to limit any like injury, things of that nature, because you know what? They're striving. They're doing great. And I can only hope that they continue in that manner, in a positive nature. What I do want to thank is a few people. Jeff, who helped Charlotte that night. Both Officer Ryan with Waukesha. I'm using their first names. Officer Ryan, who did save Grayson's life. Officer Ryan from Pewaukee, who did drive Grayson to the hospital. The other fellow dance families, who have slowly and surely advised me of their personal connections they had with my four kids that night. I'm going to be forever grateful there for their love and compassion. For their grandparents, who had to watch our two other children, <coughs> while two of them were in Children's Hospital for extended time. And for my sisters, who were my heart and soul during this whole time, helping my family move forward, trying to figure out how we move forward with four children being injured. I do have, in closing, as I mentioned earlier, I do say with a heavy heart, my hands are shaking, sorry. I do have a heavy heart because I do have my children with me. But as Charlotte has said, um, my brother, who unfortunately passed away two months before this event took place, always told us kindness will take you far. So to those who unfortunately are not with us, I just would like to read the following. I watch you every day. I am always very near. I know deep down in your heart you realize that I am here. I hear you when you speak to me, when you are on your own. You cannot understand the reason, the reason that I am gone. I will never leave you. I am here to keep you strong. Talk to me, I hear you. We share an unbroken bond that will always be. Death won't keep us apart, for our love is forever. Just remember me in your heart, and one day we will be together. Live your life and live it full. Don't waste a single day. Remember, I am always with you every step of the way. And as it has been said before, we do have angels looking over us. And my children now have six more. Thank you, Judge. What was that? What is he doing? I don't know. Every time he does something, I'm like, what are you doing? Don't do what you're doing. You piece of shit. I have struggled to write down words to describe the impact. Of our I want to see the people. I don't want to see this piece of shit. On me. What was supposed to be a joyful day was quickly turned into an unimaginable nightmare. I woke up that morning excited for the parade instead of dreading it like I always do. Out of all the walk shop parades I've walked in the past four years, this was the only one I looked forward to. If only I knew it was going to be the worst day of my life. As the parade started, I went around taking pictures of all the girls while they danced so their parents had action shots of them dancing. We rounded the corner of White Rock and finally made it onto Main Street. I remember seeing this beautiful sunset behind my girls. I recorded them dancing with the sunset behind them. Little to know that would be my last video of them. My video was taken 10 minutes before, exactly 10 minutes before the defendant senselessly drove his car straight into my girl's back. They didn't even have the chance to move out of the way before he plowed into them and continued on his path of destruction. Alice was the first body I saw. I picked her up immediately and was quickly yelled at to put her down, not knowing it could have just caused more damage to her. She was awake and conscious. I took off my coat to give her a pillow and laid over her body to shield her. I kept telling her she was going to be okay. One thing that will stick with me forever is the fact that she looked up at me with her teeth chipped and knocked out and said, why would someone do this? I will never forget those words. The defendant was 39 at the time. She was 10. If a 10-year-old knew it was wrong, so did he. 
but he didn't care because he kept driving. He is the definition of a monster. After Alice, I was with two more of my girls in the street before wake making my way to the hospital. The hospital was also another chaotic scene. Bodies all over. People were standing, sitting, and laying in the ground. I saw one of my girls laying on the floor with her mom. I held her hand and kept asking her to squeeze me so I knew she'd stay with us. She kept going in and out of consciousness. Every time she'd open her eyes, her mouth would open as she sobbed in absolute pain. I glanced to my left and saw another one of my girls at a wheelchair with about five nurses huddled around her. She wasn't doing good and they knew that. We rushed her to the back as she started to seize and vomit. When her parents arrived, I left the hospital not knowing if I'd ever see some of my girls alive again. The following days, weeks, and months were just as horrible. Four of my girls were in comas. The questions never stopped circulating in my head. Would they ever wake up? Would they even remember who I was? The thing about being a coach is you're kind of stuck in between being a mom and a friend. I felt trapped that I couldn't take their pain away. Trapped that I couldn't be there with them at the hospital every day. I had to put a brave face on for all of my other girls, even though I was completely broken inside. Attempting to describe the impact this evil crime has had on me would be impossible. How can I write into words something that broke me so badly? Emotionally and mentally, I have never been the same since that day. Throughout the whole trial, I waited for the defendant to cry, for him to show some sort of remorse. Remorse for my girls and everyone else he hurt. He has shown no sense of empathy other than for himself. Only a monster would show no remorse for such a heinous crime they committed. He knew exactly what he was doing, and he just kept driving. He knew it was wrong because he then attempted to flee after he ditched the car. He's a selfish and cowardly human being who deserves to never see the daylight again. Thank you. This is real hard to get through. I'm just going to be honest. Might need an emotional support fair in a second. They My name is Dylan Urell. Urell. I'll read their symbols that I was given. I, I... I was saying I wonder if it if it's up to them whether or not they want to be recorded, but then they just like showed her at the end, so why are they showing his ugly mug? I don't get it. J-J-K-K-L-L. -L. But their names are Charlotte, Alice, Vivian, and Grayson. I'm not a victim. It's very hard for me to stand up here and to be talking about a victim when I don't feel like a victim. My children are the victims. Other people were victims. I'm a beholder, and I feel I'm a beholder of the darkness and the evil, but also the light and the good of the aftermath of the act of the violence that Mr. Brooks brought upon the community that evening. Let's talk about this is a Christmas parade, a Christmas parade that I have attended many times. Uh, my oldest daughter, Charlotte, has been a part of the extreme dance for many years. She was there handing out candy along with my son. At that time, I did not know that he was handing out candy. But I knew that my two other daughters were a part of the teams. They're part of the junior team and the mini team. I sometimes walk into the parade. I do not like walking in the July 4th parade because it's too hot. Okay, I'd rather walk during the Christmas parade when it's a little bit cooler out. But at that time, I texted my mom and said, would you like to come? I was not supposed to be at the parade. I was supposed to be up north hunting that weekend. So I decided to stay back. Decisions that I reflect upon and think about how I became on that spot uh, off of Wisconsin Avenue on that day. So my mom texted me and said, yes, I will come meet you. So I was not, and if she did not do that, I was going to text my oldest daughter, Charlotte, and say, I'm going to meet you in the staging area, and I will come walk with you and hand out candy. So I was standing on Wisconsin well, that decision with might my have mom saved his life. and to say, now about this parade, now this is about children. The Christmas parade is about children, about happiness and love. That evening, if people remember, was very cold and windy, very bitter wind, where sometimes that wind gets you and you're almost just standing mm -hmm. there. But True. even through that coldness and the bitter wind, you can really truly feel the happiness within the crowd of the parade. And I thought about that. And it's just about, I knew that possibly around the corner, standing over on, on Wisconsin, that eventually the extreme team would be coming around that corner and, and, I, and I'd see them. And then I had my hood up and it was, it was cold, but then at the corner of my eye and kind of watching it, I see a red SUV start to come around that corner, but not really fast. 
not very fast because Mr. Brooks, you hit the brakes to go around the corner. If you did not hit the brakes, you would have taken that turn way too fast. And then you would have t gone into the Veterans Park. So that- The reason they keep bringing up why he braked is because in his questioning, he like made it a big point that he did brake instead of accelerating. That's why they keep bringing that up. Parts that didn't seem too odd to me. My hood was kind of covering. I didn't really see the damage of the SUV. So I saw the SUV turn, but I didn't think it was odd until it did not turn and crashed through the barriers. And then the officer shot three times after it. Silence. The prey, now everyone is silent. Northwest Avenue, I live on that road. Two blocks up. That is my road that I live in. Silence. But then people start kind of moving. Where it's like the prey just stopped. I moved to, this, uh, moved to the corner. And then you start seeing and feeling the people starting to stream around the corner, screaming, crying. I have my mom with me. They're saying, do not go around that corner. There are dead people. Do not go around that corner. We both looked at each other and I said, where are the children? So me and my mom went around that corner and really went through the wake of the evil and hell that Mr. Brooks, that you brought to this community. And going through and seeing and going around the corner and seeing just bodies as far as you can see injured on the ground. And sometimes I feel personal guilt that I couldn't truly stop and help some of those people in need. I had to keep going. At time I paused and paused. I have my mom screaming, crying, seeing women, adults, people injured, deceit bodies. Once we passed through that section, that's where, Mr. Brooks, you changed me. Because at that point, there's a difference where they talk about an active shooter. Not everyone saw the officer shoot. So in that case, they didn't know. There's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of misunderstanding. There's a lot of just in that all the realm. People are screaming. People are crying. There's people running all over the place. That's where you changed me, Mr. Brooks. That's where I, after a thing, I gave myself up to say, if there's an active shooter, I am willing to get shot in my head. I am running up the street. Where are my kids? And that's what I did. And as the darkness descended upon that street, as the sun was going down, and I run up the middle of the street, and I run up to the five points, I start seeing the extreme truck that they use, pom-poms on the ground, but you can't see around there, around. And then I come around. I left my mom, which was a decision that I had to make. She caught up. But I she took off on She was fine. I found my daughter, Alice, first. And it was mentioned. She had broken teeth, blood on her face, face on. She's so brave. When I came to her, I screamed her name two to three times. There were people around her trying to help her. She looks at me and she goes, Daddy, I'm okay. I'm oh okay. God. And I didn't know what to. And she looked at me and, and I, I just, at that point, I didn't understand. And I go, where's Vivian? She's over there. And I look around and there's my youngest daughter over by the side of the curb motionless her limbs weren't moving but yet her body was shaking uncontrollably so i went over there to help there and from my daughter alice i learned that my son for the first time handing out candy was in the parade i did not know that i was also told by her that charlotte my oldest was was there and was she was injured you did this they weren't the only ones the children this this is a christmas parade about love and happiness, getting ready for the holiday season. I'm sitting in the other room, <clears throat> watching other statements, and watching you roll your eyes to people's powerful statements. The hurt that people have in their souls, and you're rolling your eyes at them, and making facial expressions. If I look around this room, no one else is wearing a mask. What are you hiding from? You're wearing a mask. I don't see anybody else. Forgiveness. I do not forgive you. I do not forgive you because I have not heard these three words from you through this entire trial. I am sorry. Not once. Not once have mm -hmm. I ever heard anything. No. What I've heard you do is be abusive. Mm -hmm. Abusive to the judge. Abusive to the prosecution. Abusive to the witnesses. And I think that's what you have. You're an abuser. And that's all you have. And then when people stick up to you, do you want to become? Now you're the victim. Exactly. Exactly. This man's You carry your facts. Bible and you say you're a God-fearing man. But I feel those scriptures are hollow empty to you now. Just like God has left you. You can pat your chest 
and have that book open. That's what I, that's what I definitely But I don't I believe those, those words and those scriptures mean anything to you anymore. My children are healing, and the community is healing. If there is no verses between me, between my children and the other people that are hurt, the people that lost their lives and their families. But we're all in this together now. Every, all of us, the community. It isn't just people that live in Waukesha. What you did had these, this energy that went across, it goes so far for the people that you hurt. And I don't think you truly understand that, or maybe you don't care. For the sense thing, as other people have said, I feel the maximum is appropriate in this situation. The terror, the horror, the pain, the fear that you've caused to so many individuals. And everyone has their own unique path for healing. And I hope that you will get sentenced to what you deserve. Thank you. All right, that's all I think I can take for today. I'm going to do other things and uh, try not to dwell on this too much. I encourage you guys to do the same. Thanks so much for watching, and I will be back at some point for another amazing stream. All right, have a good one. Bye.